Hey everyone, Nathaniel Gavrosi here. And since I'm stuck in traffic, I thought I'd do a great Today in History for you. Today is December 14th, 2019, and it's the anniversary of the passing of George Washington. George Washington died on December 14th, 1799 at the age of 67. He was only retired from politics for just about three years, retiring from the presidency in 1797, not wanting to go for a third term because of the creation and emergence of party politics, which had started to form under Alexander Hamilton and Thomas Jefferson. George Washington retired back to his estate in Mount Vernon, Virginia, and he uh, was notorious for working uh, long hours maintaining his estate, which had been kind of neglected over the past uh, eight years. Uh, on December 13th, he was out working in the working on his plant on his plantation, his manor, if you will, when uh, a storm came upon him, and he really wasn't dressed properly for the for the weather that he was encountering, and he came in soaked from head to toe. And he kept working. He changed clothes and started working on his indoor uh, duties and even stayed working late into the evening in his library. So late, in fact, that Martha scolded him according to eyewitnesses' accounts about staying up so late. Unfortunately, though, by the morning of the 14th, Washington's health had started to decline and a doctor was required to come in for a house call. Unfortunately, though, for George Washington, the medical practices of the time were very ill-fated as the common solution for illnesses was to bleed somebody by placing leeches upon people's bodies to drain the blood. After 40% of Washington's blood was drained from his body, causing uh, serious medical uh, conditioning worsening. It was uh, known by not only the president, but by the physicians and his family that Washington's hour was near. And Washington was very aware of what was going on and was the family was able to gather around. He did finally ask the doctors to, to, to stop trying to treat him and to please uh, let him go. And uh, the, his last question to anyone in the room was what time it was. Uh, he was very uh, curious about the time and day he would pass. And he was told that it was about 10 till 10 on the 14th of December, 1799. And shortly thereafter, words after placing his hand upon his heart, the president had passed on. He left everything to his wife, Martha, freeing only one of his slaves. The remainder of his slaves were to be set free upon Martha Washington's passing. Uh, Martha subsequently uh, freed all of his slaves because when you think about it, if you were only in servitude until this one person died, you would probably encourage that person to not live well or live long. So Martha quickly freed the rest of Washington's slaves and uh, maintained the uh, Mount Vernon estate, which passed to her grandchildren. And it actually it maintained in the Washington family quite late into the 1800s. Washington left a, a legacy and a legend that uh, the rest of the country has been trying to live up to ever since uh, Washington was president. Washington put down two rebellions during his presidency. He was the first, so there was no precedence on how to do anything. And so Washington, as he, you know, passing was a mile marker for the country to uh, live past the point of when this man could keep the country together. Don't forget, the country had come to clashes several times uh, before the his inauguration of the Articles of Confederation and during his presidency specifically with, with the Shays and Whiskey Rebellion. With, with him passing, there was no savior to bring the country back from absolute collapse if it were to do so. So the fact that we were able to stay together and to work through our differences after Washington's passing uh, wasn't a given. It wasn't a guarantee. And we would see uh, play, you know, things play out again in the 1860s with the U.S. Civil War. But Washington, being a great man of his time, he was definitely a 18th century man and full of imperfections. And his legend is more legendary for the falsehoods of his character than of the man himself. And I think that's a disservice to him as, as a great man in 
you know, in his own right. But for us to understand how we perceive people in our histories and how they are in within their contemporaries and how we look at people today versus how we will see them in, in our history, I think is a significant lesson that we should learn. Washington was very, very imperfect. The things that he did, even as president, were, were seen as being close to being illegal. Uh, one of the reasons, again, other than the party politics where he didn't run for a third term is that he might not have actually won the election. There were several people in the House of Representatives that the day Washington announced he wasn't going to run for re-election applauded and cheered. So Washington wasn't a, you know, he was a father of a country. He had none of his own, none of his own children. And his legend of being this great person, even within the country, was starting to slip from him in his lifetime. And it wasn't for, you know, a generation or so later that we start seeing the memorialization of George Washington as a legend uh, dressed in the Roman togas and with the obelisk in the uh, capital city of Washington. There's, there's so much about George Washington that we don't really understand and realize. And the information is out there, and I encourage people to go out and read up on George Washington, not the legend or the myth, but the man himself, to understand you know, where his faults were and how he tried to correct them the best he could under the, 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 the ways and means of the time that he had. So I think it has a lot to do, we can learn a lot about ourselves and about our leaders and about the people we have in our histories who we seem as being negative or positive and then review them in, in the eyes of the contemporaries so they, how we look at them today. You know, I think it would be unfair for some people to be judged by today's standards with, when, in, with, compared to their contemporary times. So George Washington... Is, it was a great leader. He, he did, he listened, he, he persuaded over a very troubling time in the country. And I think we should acknowledge that imperfect people strive very hard to do the right thing and to be good people. And that Washington is a great example of someone whose legend is greatly embellished uh, compared to him, to him as an individual. And I think he would, he would, even he would be surprised on the ways that we worship him uh, in certain circles, uh, you know, with our, him on the dollar bill, which he actually hated paper money. Uh, but yeah, George Washington was, was a quite interesting guy. I encourage you all to go look some information up. Uh, go visit his home in Mount Vernon. Uh, his tomb is there along with Martha. Uh, Annapolis, Maryland has the location where he resigned his commission from the Continental Army. Uh, his his presidential uh, mansion was actually in Philadelphia. It's actually right under where the Liberty Bell is currently housed. They forgot about it. They found it later. Like, oh, what is this? Oh, this was the president's house. Okay, cool. Yeah, but they forgot about it. So there's there's so much about Washington that we don't really study about, uh, or you know. And I think it's a, a disservice to him and to the country as a whole. I mean, the guy won his first election by throwing a kegger. Uh, you don't learn that in school. Uh, so. Thanks, for everyone, for listening. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned a little bit about Washington. And I hope this encourages you to research and learn not about Washington, but uh, other great leaders and the reality is of who they are and not who the legends describe them as being. Thanks, everyone. Have a wonderful day.